our read aloud is called Wild Animal Families. And in this read aloud, we're gonna learn that animals have families just like people. And I want you to think, as we're listen, listening to this, how do you think animal offspring are like their parents? Wild animal families. Animals have families just like people. How do you think animal offspring are like their parents? From the moment a new wolf pup is born, its family works together to care for it. Newborn wolf pups are very tiny. They only weigh about a pound. The new pups snuggle up against their mother in their den. The father stands guard outside. The pups cannot see or hear yet. The dark, quiet den is a safe home for them. At first, the pups drink their mother's milk. Soon, they will eat meat. The father hunts to provide meat for the family. The parents chew the meat and then spit it into the pups' mouths. After two months, the pups join the rest of the wolf family. Wolves live in groups called packs. Members of the pack play with the pups, bring them food, and even babysit while the parents hunt. At six months, the pups will be ready to hunt with the pack. One of the vocabulary words that they used was provide. And so to provide means to give what they need. So your parents should provide you with food, shelter, water, clothing. Those are all things that you need. Now, who provides for the baby wolves? Or the pups, they call them. Rain? The dad. The dad will sometimes provide by what? What does he do? Protect them. What else does the dad do? Corla? It does, doesn't it? Okay, what else does the dad do? He protects them, but that's not the only thing he does to help provide for his family. Caden? He stands guard. He stands guard. They use that. Good example. Tyson? Sometimes the dad does go get food. Yes, he has to hunt for food. You're right. Now, what does the mom do? Aria? Do you know what the mom does? I'll come back to you. Who remembers what the mom does? Wyatt? Say it one more time, Wyatt. She might have more pups. Yep, that's a wee. Um, but what does she do to provide for the baby pups she has? Charlotte? Oh. What does she do to provide for them? They're babies. How are they going to survive? Oh. Eating food? Okay. She will get food. And then she chews it up in her mouth, and then she gives it to the, ba the baby pups so they can eat it in smaller pieces. Kind of like what a, um, a bird will do with worms. Caden. Um, also, the mom feeds them milk. Yes, the mom feeds them milk. So Good they, job. So they don't get thirsty. So they, so they survive. They need to be able to survive. Just like when you guys were babies, your moms and dads had to feed you milk. You couldn't eat food right away. No. But they had to provide you with food. Babies. With milk. I'm sorry, not food, but milk. So that you're able to grow and develop. Because if you didn't have milk to give you the nutrients and everything you needed, you wouldn't be able to survive. So the mama also gives them milk. Lewis. And the mama also stays with the puppies. The mom stays with the puppies. Good. She guards them, she guards yes, them also, so doesn't dead. she? Well, the dad goes and finds me. Yep. L-E-A. I mean, I'm sorry, L-E-S. I meant L-E-S. She protects them. She protects them. Did I ask you guys, what is a group of wolves called? <gasps> Everybody. A pack. Yeah. Good. We learned about groups. La in um, grammar last week, collective groups. Yeah. And they live in a pack. That's our collective noun.
town. They live in a pack. That is their group. That's a fox. This is a wolf. They call it their wolf. Yeah, so they're basically a fox. Carson, look, Mrs. Huffies. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The it is a cold winter day in Antarctica. A mother, Emperor Penguin, has just laid her egg. Now she will leave and head for the sea to eat. What happens to the egg? The father penguin stays to keep it warm. The father protects the egg by resting it on his feet and covering it with a warm layer of feathered skin. He stands for about two months to keep the egg warm. He eats nothing this whole time. After the chick hatches, the mother penguin returns with food for the baby. Now it's the father's turn to head for the sea to eat and rest. The chick sits on its mother's feet and is covered with her warm feathers for about two months. Then the mother leaves to get food for the chick. Emperor penguins live in big groups. So when the mothers go for food, all the chicks huddle together to keep warm. When the chicks get older, the parent penguins guide them to the sea. They follow one another waddling, sliding, and diving off the ice into the sea to learn to fish for food. Okay, so just like we talked about earlier, Miss Shaper's, remind me, first, first group, group is yeah. going to go with her now because she can't take you this afternoon. So Miss Shaper's first group, you just quietly just shake her. There's going to be um, oh. No, not John. No, I don't think so. Okay. No, you don't. Okay, so we just talked about a few minutes ago, Abby was talking about penguins, and she said the dad is the one at first to protect the eggs while the mom goes. The dad does not eat food for a whole lot. Two months. Two months. Two months. Two months. So he will stand there and protect those eggs for two months and not eat any food. For two whole months. No. Once the eggs hatch, then whose turn is it? Brooklyn? Mom. mom. The moms. Go ahead, Brooklyn. Two I, months. I can tell that's a mom because um, there's more fur on the mom's bottom than the dad's. So okay. it's a mom. So and the mom's a widow. She is protecting them. And so now it's the dad's turn to go get food. They kind of like switch. Yeah, now they it's, switch. Now it's the dad's turn to go get food. And she is keeping that penguin warm on her feet for about two months mm -hmm. also. Maybe a little bit more, it said. It said about two months. Um, and then once they are ready to kind of go on their own, the parents, the mom and the dad, they guide them to the ocean. And then they have to teach them how to survive on their own. Hayden. How can they live for two months? They must have to eat a lot of food and keep it keep it stored in their body. That would be cool. Because we can't go for three days without Yeah, you guys. No, no. No, seven. You, you guys can't even go like half a day without food. And then you're like, Mrs. Murphy, I'm starving. <laughs> I can. It's nine days for water, Brooklyn. It's three, yeah. It's, it's three days for water. And right, 30, it's not very long. And 30 days for um, food. No, I think not I'm not exactly sure. People have say it's kind of different amounts, but yeah. So it's important that they eat enough food and they have enough fat on them to keep them going. Okay, our next card is some elephants here. So let's learn about these elephants. Thirsty and hot, a group of elephants walk to a water hole. The calves, or baby elephants, are very tired but their mothers and aunts push them along with their trunks. They do not want the calves to be separated from the herd or group. The herd is led by the oldest elephant. She is the grandmother. The adult elephants in the family take care of the little ones. They also take care of the elephants that are very old. There are no male elephants in the herd. Once they reach the water hole, the elephants suck water up through their trunks and blow it into their mouths. They squirt cool water over their bodies and their babies. One mother rescues her calf that is stuck in the mud. Elephants say a lot by their behavior. Two elephants may hug by wrapping their trunks together. Another elephant makes 
loud trumpeting noises to call for a baby who has wandered off. Still another elephant may stretch out her ears to listen and sniff the air with her trunk. Is danger near? If so, the herd will stand together and the babies will hide behind the adults. What is a baby elephant called? Tyson? A calf. A calf, good job. Now, what is a group of elephants called, John? Oh, you were with Okay, what is a group of elephants called, Kinsley? Yes, a herd. Now, who is the leader of this herd? Caden? Grandma. Grandma, grandmother. Grandma is the leader. And who cannot be in this herd? Who can't be in there? Ray, uh, Raylan? Males. The males. So any boys cannot be a part of this herd. It's only the girls, and the grandma is the one that is in charge. Now, how do these ladies protect the babies. Aria? Yeah, how do they do that though? What do they do? What are some things that they do to show that they're protecting the baby? Okay, I'll come back to you. Rain. Hug them with their trunk. They'll hug them with their trunk <laughs> to keep them close to them. Good one. Brooklyn? Um, to keep them safe, they push them behind them. Yep, they kind of, they said they hugged them and gave them kind of a little push to kind of keep them with them. What do they do with their ears? I thought this was very interesting. What do they do with their ears, Libby? Why? What was it? Fly? No, that's I Dumbo. <laughs> I don't think elephants can fly. I think only dumb How about Addy? Um, they stretch them out to see if um, danger near. Yeah, they stretch them out really big and they listen to see if they can hear any noises to see if they can hear if danger is near. And, and what do they do with their trunk? Corla? Yep, they drink the water through their trunks and blow it into their mouths. But what else do they do with their trunk, Caden? They blow it up in the air so it hits them. Yep, they do that so too. So they can wash their body. Definitely. One last thing. I know they do this to protect their babies. Um, Brooklyn. They, they, get, they lift them up with their trunk and then they set them down and push them behind them so they don't get hurt. Yep, they help guide with their trunk. Yep, you're right. Keep them safe and guide them. Kinsley? Um, they put them up to test if they're, um, if they're dangerous. That's what I was looking for. They use their trunk to smell and to sniff and to sense if there's danger. So they can sense if there's danger. Okay, good one. All right. Yep. Okay, let's go into the last one. Oh, look at this one. Three mothers sit and watch their youngsters run, climb, and chase one another. Another mother sits holding her baby who is too young to play. Are these youngsters children at a playground? No. They are young, wild gorillas romping in a mountain forest. The leader of this gorilla family is a male gorilla called a silverback. Silverbacks get their name because the hair on their backs turns a silver gray as they get older. The silverback protects his family from other silverbacks or people. If he is seen pounding his chest and roaring, he is angry. What do gorillas do all day? When they wake up in the morning, they search for food. In the afternoon, the older gorillas nap while the young ones play. Later, they look for more food. Then, they groom the young ones by pulling dirt and bugs from their hair. When the silverback says it's bedtime, each gorilla makes a nest using branches and leaves. The males sleep on the ground. The children snuggle with their mothers in the trees. Okay, so who's the leader of this group? I don't know. Arya? 
the dad. And what did they call him? He has a special name. The male gorilla. What is he called, Elias? The silverback. The silverback. That's his name. He's the leader. And so how does he protect his family? Addy? He, um, kind of guides them so they don't run into danger. Yep, he will guide them so they don't go into danger. Libby? You forgot? That's okay. John, are you just stretching?